give you all some heat. We have a couple of announcements this morning. Uh, the Inman Seniors will not be meeting on February 4th. I guess it's been canceled because of COVID, because of the COVID outbreak. Another important announcement, March 1st, Mobile Meals is returning to a full-time delivery and they are desperately in need of drivers for the Inman area on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Now there's no specific driving requirements needed to drive their vehicles, but we need some people. So if you are interested, uh, we have a number here for you to call. Her name is Paula. Her number is 573-7684. We can leave this with maybe Sandra maybe, and then she could give that phone number out if anybody's interested in helping out with the meals. I have no other announcements. If anybody else does, please let me know. Right? Let us prepare our hearts for worship. season of the spiritual gifts we are given. We know that these are not for us to hold on to, but are gifts for us to share. Gifts in heaven for giving. As we offer our worship and through the week, prompt us to see the gifts you have written in our hearts. May we generously share all we are given. As the divine so generously gives God's up to us, may we follow God's lead as we lovingly give our gifts to the world.
we are so grateful to have power back at Edmond United Methodist Church, and we have for prayers of thanksgiving for that. Our heat is not quite caught up, however, and so I thank you for being in your overcoats here uh, and, and staying. My goodness, look who all is here staying in the cold. Uh, we're grateful to be able to worship again uh, and are grateful that you are here. Uh, we, um, you have the list in your own heart to those for whom you would intercede in prayer. Also the list on the back of the, the bulletin is there. Let us pray. Loving God, there are things happening across our world in terms of weather and natural disasters, and we are mindful of those things as we come to you in prayer. We begin with our thanksgiving for all of those things with which you have blessed us and continue to bless us. We pause to lift our thanksgiving to you privately. Let us pray. Stay in that private place with you and privately lift to you those places. We know we are missing the mark of discipleship. We ask that you would show us the places that we are not aware of, that we might continue to grow uh, in strength and grow in likeness of Jesus. Uh, and we ask these things, uh, we lift these things to you now. Let us pray. fully and love us, uh, we ask that as you continue to pour that love across our globe, that it might be in those places, uh, that those in shadow might feel your love and be nourished by it. We ask that those who are continuing tirelessly, or maybe very tired, working with treatments for and the treatment of those with the, the virus, that they might be strengthened and encouraged. Uh, for all those who are, are weary of working at home or perhaps continuing to be with little children who are not able to be vaccinated yet, send your strength and courage to them. Uh, across our globe, these things are happening. We ask that you would continue to pour your spirit in every place that is calling out for help. May we hear when we are called to be your hands and feet in this world, that we might respond, not all of us to the same need, but each to the one that we are called to respond. For all the ways that you walk with us and walk with those who are at the effect of volcanoes and, uh, and the nor'easter that's hit the northeast, we ask your help, uh, we ask your strength and courage, we ask that you would continue to be with us in South Carolina as we navigate winter weather that is very rare, um, but we ask that you would hear us as we thank you for having heat and being able to watch from our homes the snow and the beauty of that weather. Uh, continue to walk with us, help us to navigate smartly each of the obstacles that we face we ask that you would be with us as we lift these names to you. May they come to mind from your, your mind that we might intercede on behalf of those in need in our own lives, in our own world. We lift those to you privately now. Let us pray. Mm -hmm. as we lift 
the prayer that Jesus taught disciples to pray when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. It's going to invite Steve Smith. Uh, but let's invite the children to come up if you are at home and you've got children. Uh, then just come and, and hear these words. Uh, imagine that I have a battery in my hand. A battery that would run a flashlight, a battery that uh, may even run a cell phone. And without that battery, the flashlight, useless. The toy we might be playing with when the battery goes dead, useless. Our scripture for today is about love and the love that makes our gifts, when we give our gifts to this world, it's only the love that makes them useful and meaningful and purposeful. Our scripture is about that today, that without love, they mean nothing. And so we want to be sure that we are asking God to show us how to love, no matter how old we are. In Jesus' name, let's pray. Loving God, show us how to love. Fill us with your love. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. And now let us continue our worship as we bring God's tithes and our offering. Well, they are coming up. We want to thank all of you who are at home and watching this online. Come on up, please. Uh, while, uh, for being so faithful in your giving, whether you're giving online or sending in your checks, we're so grateful. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for every gift you give to us, and we ask that each one might be multiplied for your kingdom right here at Inman United Methodist Church and beyond. In Jesus' name, amen.
Corinthians, the 13th chapter. All right. If I speak in tongues of human beings and of angels, but I don't have love, I'm a clanging gong or a clashing cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and I know all the mysteries and everything else, and if I have such complete faith that I can move mountains, but I don't have love, I'm nothing. If I give away everything that I have and hand over my own body to feel good about what I've done, but I don't have love, I receive no benefit whatsoever. Love is patient. Love is kind. It isn't jealous. It doesn't brag. It isn't arrogant. It isn't rude. It doesn't seek its own advantage. It isn't irritable. It doesn't keep a record of complaints. It isn't happy with injustice but it is happy with the truth. Love puts up with all things, trust in all things, hopes for all things, endures all things. Love never fails. As for prophecies, they will be brought to an end. As for tongues, they will stop. As for knowledge, it will be brought to an end. We know in part and we prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, what is partial will be brought to an end. When I was a child, I used to speak like a child, reason like a child, think like a child. But now that I have become a man, I have put an end to such childish things. Now we see a reflection in a mirror. Then we will see face to face. Now I know partially, but then I will know completely in the same way that I have been known completely. Now faith, hope, and love remain these three things, and the greatest of these is love. You've heard the writings of our faith. Thanks be to God. God has activated spiritual gifts in each of us, and we respond by putting them into practice for the common good of the body for others, for all others. We are interconnected, and each of the gifts that we bring to this community are important. We've been taught that we need one another in a fundamental way. As Martin Luther King Jr. said, we are caught in an escapable network of mutuality. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. So whether we use our God-given gifts and how we use our God-given gifts actually affects more than just ourselves. Today we are exploring a crucial piece of living into the greatest gift of all. Our text for today is the love chapter. We've heard it at weddings and we've heard it at funerals. And here, after our focus on God's activating spiritual gifts in us, those ways we have been equipped to walk in this life as disciples of Christ. After all the talk about the gifts we've been given, we are told in this text, gifts are meaningless without love. All the gifts we might give, given without love, are useless. 
in my training and then as my appointment as a spiritual director located at St. John's in Rock Hill, there were tools I picked up over the years to help look at just what God is doing in our lives in a particular time or in a particular situation. I have a spiritual direction tool called the transformation game. It is not a game at all, but a way to get insight about a particular question for our lives. It is one of those things in which the more sincerely I make the invitation, the more deeply the Holy can speak to me. I like to do this process at the beginning of the year. It was this process on New Year's Day in 2014 that spoke clearly to me about my calling to church ministry. The Holy Spirit knows I look for guidance there, and so the Holy Spirit speaks to me clearly through this tool. I once asked a friend if he would play the, the game or do this process with me, and he said he would. As we sat down to begin, I was explaining the process as a metaphor for our lives. There's a personal path, each separate path, on which we would uh, take on the board. I explained the different levels, the physical level, the emotional, mental, and spiritual level, through which we, with holy help, would explore our questions. I was telling him how the Holy Spirit works to give me new insights or directions for my life every time I do this process. And he said, well, okay, but there's nothing about my spiritual life that I don't already know. I have conversations with Jesus every day. I didn't have a response for that. I knew this process well enough to know that I could just watch the Holy Spirit do her work. I sometimes think we don't get how small our capacity is behind this dark mirror, this veil, uh, how small our perspective is, the inability that we have to see the big picture, God's big picture. The perspective is tiny. Our human point of view is extremely narrow. We can only take in from God what our hearts are large enough to hold. Our hearts are only as large as we have been freely willing for God to grow us and make us new. We are changed by our walk with God. Our United Methodism theology is largely about sanctification. That's the word we United Methodists use to describe God's work in us after we have invited the Holy into our lives, after we've accepted Jesus as our Lord and God. Here's the thing about God's work in us or our sanctification. If we think we know so much that there is nothing more to learn, how can God get past that to teach us anything more? If your life is like mine, then we have experienced that sometimes God allows life to break our hearts wide open. In our brokenness, we become, become humble enough and willing enough to see what God and our angels are showing us. So when my friend said that day, there's nothing about my spiritual life I don't already know, I thought, really? We can have all the gifts in the world, our text tells us, but without love, they are meaningless. So Paul describes what he means by spiritual love. Let's unpack Paul's words. And as we explore Paul's words, let's explore ourselves in the light of these familiar words. Buckle your seatbelts. Here we go. Paul begins, love is patient. Patience is a fruit of the Spirit. We can't manufacture patience on our own. That means that without our joining with God's being, without our communion with God, patience will elude us. Only with God can we grow into patient human beings. Can we find God's patience in us this morning? Love is kind. Kindness is a fruit of the Spirit. 
That means that without our invitation to God to help us, we cannot manufacture kindness on our own. Only living our lives in communion with God can we truly be kind. Can we find God's kindness in us? Love is not envious. We have no need to covet what another person might have. Celebrating with others is an appropriate response to their gifts, since God's abundance is more than enough for all of us. We are not meant to have what others have. Each one's personal path is unique and ordained and worthy of the highest appreciation. All our paths are blessed especially when we can't see purpose and meaning, meaning from our narrow perspective, when we walk that path in communion with God, we know our blessing. Love is not envious. Love is not boastful. Love knows that we of ourselves have nothing to boast about. If it is in us, it is God's gift given to us to offer to the world. Love is not boastful. Love is not arrogant. The recipe for arrogance includes equal parts of self-importance and disregard of others. It is a better than quality that is not love. Love is not arrogant. Love is not rude. Love is not ill-mannered, disagreeable, or discourteous. To be rude includes not being able to agree to disagree with others, to behave in a way that is not kind. Love plays well with others, honors others. Love listens to stay in tune with and in harmony with the others in an atmosphere of God's love. Love is not rude. Love does not insist on its own way. Love sees that my way is only one way. My way is not the universal way for all others. What we see as God's way for us is not necessarily God's way for all God's children. Love doesn't insist on its own song and key and timing, no matter what notes and melody are being sung around us. Love is not irritable. Love is not easily annoyed or exasperated or touchy. I don't know about you, but this love business is starting to step on my toes. But oh wait, apparently love doesn't include getting our toes stepped on. Love is not easily annoyed. Love is not able to be irritated. Love trust what is. Love is not resentful. Love does not take offense. Love knows another's actions are not to be taken personally. Another's actions are about, are about him or herself and his or her own state of mind. Love does not get annoyed at having been treated badly. God help us. Seen from the eyes of love, nothing has happened that is personal to me. Love has compassion for one miserable enough to lash out at another. Love is not resentful. Love does not rejoice in wrongdoing. It is not loving to be happy at the mistakes or the failures of others. Love is understanding. Love sees Christ in every other, no matter the mistakes or failures. Love forgives all shortcomings, especially our own. Love does not rejoice in wrongdoing. Love rejoices in truth. Love rejoices in honesty and sincerity. Love sees the reality that my truth is probably not the capital T truth. Love prays to know the T capital T truth, to be loyal and true in one's character. Love rejoices in the truth. 
Love bears all things. And so whatever the world or another throws at us, our love is not extinguished. When we can hold on to very little else, we can cling to the love God has given to us and gives to the world through us. Love is a fruit of the Spirit. Love is not just a feeling. Love is a choice we are able to make when we are in communion with God. Love bears all things. Love believes all things. Love believes all sacred things. All that is holy, love believes. In Christ we are given discerning hearts, so when we are in conflict about what to believe, we can enter into communion with our peace, where God resides, with God and in that sacred closet of our hearts, we allow God to work in us until we are at peace. God gives us peace about what in the world to believe in communion with God. We are given the spiritual gift of faith. Our, in our faith, we set aside our disbelief and trust that God is able, that God is good. Love believes. Love hopes all things. Hope holds the curiosity to see what God is doing next. Love expects the best now and in the future. Hope brings with it the context of belief in which God can work miracles. Hope never dies. Love hopes all things. Love endures all things. No matter how long we have been in a circumstance or how long we might have been in a situation, love trusts the timing of God. Love endures all things. Now, please hear this. Love doesn't keep itself in harm's way on purpose. That's not the kind of enduring love talks about. It is not loving to keep ourselves in harm's way. But love endures in the situations and circumstances of life in which divine will flows unimpeded. We may never understand why things happen the way they do. We do trust that there is purpose and meaning in all that God is allowing in communion with God. Love endures all things. Love never ends. Love never ends. God's love for us never ends. Our love for each other never ends. What we take with us beyond this life is love. Let's increase it. In communion with God, let's teach only love. For love is what God has created us all to be. Nothing else counts. Nothing matters unless there is love included. No spiritual gift shared without love is ever true to God's intention. We could work a lifetime trying to measure up to the standard of these few verses. Hear the good news. We are not in this by ourselves. God invites us to stay in communion with the Holy Family that we might keep becoming spiritually aware. We don't now know what we don't know. God invites us to let the divine movement be at work in us. None of us can possibly honestly say, there's nothing I don't already know. So as that process continued with my close friend, he reached the spiritual level and drew an awareness card that said only, unknown. He said, unknown? What could that mean on the spiritual level? Well, I speculated. Maybe it means that there are some things that you don't yet know about your spiritual life. He said, as soon as I said that, I heard how arrogant it sounded. 
and his new awareness card, unknown, took its place on the spiritual level of his path. The divine is helping us, helping us, helping us in all manner of ways, speaking to each of us in languages we understand, that we might live in an atmosphere of love. Where is it that you are looking for God to speak personally to you about your spiritual life? God speaks that we might be aware of all that love intends for our daily lives and behaviors. We need God's help because for now, we see in a mirror dimly. Now we only know in part. Here's more good news. God is moving us toward a time when we will know fully even as we have always been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. Love is a spiritual gift. We're invited to be in connection, in communion with the divine. We cannot possibly manufacture love on our own. We want to be so close to God that we can find love in ourselves. We can find God's love and that others can find love in us as well. Love is the key to the kingdom and the greatest spiritual gift of all. Amen. If you will get your bulletin, small though they are, this week, Let's stand and say together what we believe. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who works in others and us through the Spirit. We follow in the way of Jesus, celebrating God's presence, living with respect in creation, loving and serving others, seeking justice and resisting injustice, and seeking out hope and peace. We believe every person, regardless of color, religion, creed, age, class, or orientation, is a child of God. We are connected because we are family. We gather because we all have something to share. We encourage one another and hold each other accountable. But most of all, we love one another Thanks be to God. Amen. Join me in hymn number 145. <laughs>
Let us go from this place, happy to have been here to worship one another together. And we ask that you would know that you have been fully known by love, always. Allow that, that love to flow in and through us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. 